Greetings from the base of the incline lift at the Skagit Project. I'm Mike McClure with the June edition of Network on Television. And I'm Sharon Bennett. There are several major jobs keeping crews busy here and bringing workers in from Seattle. In fact, the Skagit is filled with activity this summer. The incline lift operation has just been automated. And Diablo Generator Unit 31 is being rebuilt to be more efficient today and meet tomorrow's demand for power. Work is getting started with help from engineering and the machine, carpenter, steel, and paint shops. To undertake this kind of job, you can't find replacement parts just anywhere. The massive water wheel weighs in at 33 tons and was manufactured in Yugoslavia. Getting it here was half the fun. It was flown via Russian transport on one of the world's largest airplanes. NTV director Tony Hopkins was on hand to see the touchdown and huge crane-to-truck transfer for the last leg of the trip to the Skagit. Work at Diablo also includes electrical work in the switchyard, replacing breakers, redoing bus work, and eventual replacement of the main bank of transformers. A steel crew and constructors up from Seattle are working on that job. Activity at Diablo will continue over the next several months and will bring you updates since many Skagit and Seattle crews are involved. With so much activity underway, the cookhouse is busy pumping out three meals a day. Housing here is filled to capacity. And this summer's Skagit tours are just getting underway. I'm trying to work with a little bit of less labor in here and try to keep the standards up within the cookhouse because there is a lot of cleaning and a, you know, a lot of preparation of food. So I'm working with that and working with my crew to see where we can come up with maybe um, keeping our standards up but um, cutting back a little bit on the labor cost in here. So that's a challenge and that's, I think that's going to be our hardest part for this summer. Visitors this year are encouraged to sample the Skagit with the emphasis on the unique features of our operations and the beauty of the surroundings. The tours publicize the good things we do to maintain our operations and enhance the quality of life in our service territory by providing excellent energy services. If you want to make reservations for Skagit tour tickets, the number employees may call is 386-4394. Another big project is underway at Ross Dam. A new Ross Lake boathouse will be built here as a cooperative effort between Seattle City Light and the National Parks Department. There's been a race to get a ladder built on the back of the dam for the mooring system before the lake level rises. A team in civil engineering worked on the design and the steel shop came up to put the ladder into place. We just worked straight through trying to get it done. The water was coming up. We had to try and get the lower ones and, and try to save the upper ones for last came to a point where we actually we ran out of parts. We had to take a few days off to get some things fabricated down in town and get to the galvanizers. Then, as soon as they were ready, we all came back up again and started working again on it. So it's been going real well. The boathouse mooring will attach to the steel pipes, and another 10 sets of stairs will be built next winter when the water level is lowered again. The boathouse design is underway, and completion is scheduled for June 1995. Here at the Skagit, boating between Diablo and Ross is part of many employees' daily routine. And with safety as one of our corporate goals, water safety at the Skagit was recently emphasized. Training in rescue techniques, safe handling of small boats, and how to use equipment to respond to a spill on the water was offered to reinforce boating safety skills. Keep in mind that 90% of the stories we show on NTV come from your ideas. Although we can't cover them all, we do strive to show work from all over the utility. So call 684-3008 if you have a story to suggest for NTV coverage. A couple of months ago, we told you about City Light's Greg Carlson, who was on his way to the Philippines as a volunteer. Well, Greg's back, and here are some of the scenes of construction as he worked on building a school and church under the tropical sun. Greg spent three weeks of vacation there and says he'd do it all over again. Good work, Greg. There's a new tool being used in the field, and the sight of it could be somewhat alarming. No, it's not a high-powered automatic weapon. Al Westerman is using the Ranger, an infrared thermometer, to check the temperature of transformers on top of poles. The device is a handy troubleshooter to see which transformer may be out, not carrying load. This saves a time-consuming trip up the pole with hooks or from a bucket truck. The Ranger records data accurately and is a small example of streamlining operations tying in with one of our five strategic initiatives. If you haven't seen our recent video, Strategic Corporate Plan, a framework for the future, 
you're not up to speed on the utility's strategic planning process. We'll be telling you more in the coming months, but each division has a copy of the video, so check with your director to view it. Or call 684-3112 to borrow a copy. If you've missed any NTV stories, you may also check out a copy of previous month's tapes. Again, the number to call is 684-3112. Now don't forget, the next CLIA picnic will be held right here at the Skagit on Saturday, September 17th. Volunteers are needed to help with games, food, and more. To volunteer or to reserve a campsite, call Ruby Haywood at 684-3394. Campsites will go fast, and you don't want to miss out on a fun weekend. The last time the picnic was held here, two years ago, a big crowd of city lighters and their families were on hand. Well, have a great summer. From the Skagit, I'm Mike McClure. And I'm Sharon Bennett for Network on Television. We'll see you next month. Bye-bye.